do we've been saying not me whether it's our 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 desire of not wanting to or our self-consciousness of not being thinking we're not able to whatever it is god's bigger than all of it yeah. and i know myself he's asked me to do a lot of things i didn't want to do but in obedience i did them and yeah probably in a lot of fear i did them too but in doing what he asked me to do not only am i blessed but more importantly i am seeing lives change i can point at a few women in this room right now amen. that are changing amen out of someone's obedience you don't have to think up something you got to do you don't have to dig anywhere else for answers just listen and obey amen Amen. 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 He's still a knowing God. Hey, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna kind of piggyback on what Tammy just said. Look, there was a whole lot of things. How many churches are there in Coffeeville outside of this one? A bunch. A bunch. A bunch. Okay. There's even more than I knew. So, three and a half years ago, standing in my brother's backyard, I'd already pastored two churches at that point. And our cousin had just passed away, and I'm standing in my backyard, and I said, man, there's a way to reach these people that ain't being reached. And standing in that backyard with my brother and me crying our faces off, over the next two weeks, God started birthing what we call the Agape Fellowship Church right now. Amen. And I got to ask, I got to ask, by several pastors before we opened this church. Well, why do you need another church? coffeeville has got all kinds of churches. Why don't Why don't you just go to one of them? I've been to some of them churches. Amen. I know a lot of I know a lot of pastors in this town. I know several pastors who are doing it right. But here's the truth: there's a whole group of people that nearly every church in this town is missing. Amen. That don't want to have anything to do with. Amen. That could care less about reaching them. Amen. Mm -hmm. yep. Right. There's a need. Amen. And here's another truth for you that most people can't handle. If somehow all these churches tomorrow, if all these churches in town tomorrow got everybody in Coffeeville saved, there would not be enough room in all the churches in Coffeeville to house them. Amen. There's 9,000 plus people in this town. The biggest church in our town only holds three to four hundred people. We need more churches. Amen. We need more people standing up and pray uh, and, and and praising the name of Jesus and preaching the gospel of Christ. Amen. We need more, Amen. not less. Amen. We need more. More church outside. Now watch this. Yeah, we need more church outside the walls of the church, quote unquote. Amen. The church needs to be out there. Amen. The church needs to be on mission. We need to be in people's lives. The word disciple isn't a word where somebody comes to church once or twice a week and gets something from you and leaves. The word disciple is something about I'm involved in their life. They're involved in my life. Jesus' disciples went everywhere Jesus went, went everywhere Jesus went to preach, went everywhere Jesus went to lay his head down, went off to pray with him, went to, are you seeing the point now? They were on the road with him. They slept in the dirt with him. They slept in the boat with him. They were part of his life. A disciple is someone who lives out the, the example set before them. And we're not told in Matthew where we get our great commission. Most of us think, well, we need to proclaim the gospel to all the ends of the earth. No, there's going to be, God's going to do that part. God's going to get that part done. Matthew says, go into all the world and make disciples, teaching them whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. Right? Why is the church suffering right now? I believe it's because we're not teaching scripture anymore. Amen. We've got church camps and ministry experiences and band concerts which are all fine okay 
And I'm, I'm not against Christian concerts, okay? One of the greatest experiences I ever had in my life was going to uh, Rooster Days with that guy right over there. Heard Mercy Me for the first time live in concert, okay? I didn't hear it on the radio. At Rooster Days, the very first time I ever heard it. Falling my face off while, while he's up there singing that song, okay? I'm not against that, but we need to get back to teaching scripture, Amen. teaching the gospel, discipling. Discipleship is I learn what my master wants me to do, and then I emulate that. Amen. That's discipleship, okay? We don't do that no more. We, it's a free-for-all. We can live for Christ however we want to. I'm sorry, that's not the Bible. Amen. That's not scriptural. Amen. So this morning, when Tammy said that, I think it's important for us to understand what God expects from me. Amen. Everybody hold your hand up. If you know Jesus Christ, he has an expectation of you. He has something he wants you to do. Amen. 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 We can't always look at our brother and sister and say, well, that's for him to do or that's for that person to do. I don't know what God wants me to do. You don't know what God wants you to do. You need to get back in this Bible. And you need to be in prayer. You need to be in the word and in prayer. Everything for our life pertaining to life and godliness is in Amen. these books. Amen. I don't say this book because this book is a book of 66 books. Amen. 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 Everything that we need to do to live for God is in the pages of this book. Right. These books. Amen? Amen. We need to do that. Hey, Mike, will you run up there behind the curtain and get my water before I pass out from dry mouthedness? Yeah, you never heard of that before. Go watch White, uh, White Man Can't Jump. You'll learn all about that. <laughs> it's in there. Isn't it? All right. Pastor, yes, ma'am. I know that as Psalms is the biggest book, what is the smallest? Oh, Jude. goodness, Jude, Jude is Jude? the smallest book. Yeah. I thought maybe uh, Makai. No, Jude's only one page. It's not, okay. page. Yeah, it's not even a full page. It's not even a full page. Jude's okay. not even a full page. Thank you. Uh, we, and if you want the longest psalm, it's 119, right? <laughs> yeah, Ooh. and that's more than one page. Yeah, that's like 15 pages yeah. or something. Yeah. David got really anx uh, anxious about writing in that one, didn't he? Yeah, but I would challenge anybody to sit down and read it because I, I haven't read it in a long time, but I never once have I been able to read it without getting on my face. Now, I want to read a verse out of Psalm 119 just because we brought it up, okay? Amen. Because <laughs> it goes right along with what I've been talking about. Psalms 119, and I should have it. Marked in here. Verse 18. This is this you can use for a prayer when you're about to study God's word. Okay? Psalms 119, verse 18 says this: Open thou my eyes that I may that I may behold wonders, wondrous things out of thy law. That's what you need to be praying. Lord, show me wondrous things Amen. out of your law. When, when he says law, we understand that in nowadays terms at scripture, okay? Yes. Out of your scripture. Because all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is useful for reproof, correcting, and training in righteousness, Amen. right? Amen. So we don't have just God's word in Old Testament or the law, but we have it in the New Testament as well. Amen. Amen. All right, everybody grab somebody's seatbelt or look at them and tell them, buckle it up. Buckle it up. Buckle we'll go up back your seatbelt. Huh? What was it, that verse? 119, Psalms 119, verse 18. Thank you. All right. Since we've been talking so much about holding on to the scripture and holding on to what we believe, amen, I want you to look at your neighbor. Now, don't do it mean, okay? <laughs> look at your neighbor and ask them, what do you believe? What do you believe? Jesus asked his disciples a question. Remember this? He said, whom do men say that I am? And some of them said, some say that thou art 
Elijah. And some say that thou art John the Baptist or one of the other prophets. And Jesus looked at them and he asked them another question. And he said, but who do you say that I am? And we know this is where Peter gets his name changed from Simon to Peter. Because Peter looks at Jesus and he said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus looked at him and said, Simon bar Jonah, Flesh and blood have not revealed this unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And he said, I call you Peter. And upon this rock shall I build what I am to call my church. Wow. What's the revelation? What's the revelation? Who Jesus is. Now I want to I wanna find a verse. And I, I'm bad about this. I try to make Mike find me verses sometimes. And I might make him find me one right now. Where it says, <clears throat> where Jesus says, I think it's John 14. I don't even want to make you find it, Mike. I just want to go look and see if I'm right now. I want to go to John 14. <clears throat> John chapter 14. See if I'm right or not. I like that. I like seeing if I'm right or not. Sometimes I am, sometimes I ain't. Mm. Verse 14. Oh, chapter 14, verse 18. He says, and I will not leave you comfortless. I will come unto you. Yet a little while the world seeth me no more, but ye see me because I live, shall ye live also. And at that day you shall know that I am in the Father, and the Father, and, and you in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them is he that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. This is a very important scripture because what happened when Jesus was asking who the men say that I am wasn't just their conscious minds answering the questions. How do I know that? Because Jesus looked at Peter and said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. In other words, your mind did not think this up, but my father in heaven told you this. This was a revelation that was given to Peter. I want to I want to insinuate this with what Jesus just said. He said, "He that loveth me keeps my commandments, and he that loveth me will I manifest myself to him." So many people, and I'm holding fingers up, and I'm using quotations. There's so many people who know God, quote unquote. They've got a knowledge, they've got an understanding, they've read that book, but they haven't had the born again experience of Christ revealing Himself to them. Amen. Amen. There's a difference. There's a difference between knowing the law and knowing Christ. How do I know that? Because Jesus, on the last week that he was alive, looked at the Pharisees and said, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, teachers of the law. Amen. Why did he say that? They knew the scriptures. By the scriptures, we know that we can Find the knowledge unto salvation, right? Isn't that what Paul told Timothy? He said, you know that from a young man you have, have had the scriptures which are able to make you wise unto salvation. But in this instance, Jesus is trying to draw a parable. And you remember at the beginning of the book of John, come Nicodemus by night to see Jesus. Nicodemus was a teacher of the law, the leader of the Pharisees. Nicodemus came to him and said, Lord, we know that thou art a man come from God, because no one can do the works that you do except God were with him. Nicodemus was trying to figure out in his mind how this guy was connected with God. And then Jesus looked at him and said, you must be born again. And that flabbergasted Nicodemus even more because he said, well, how can a man be born when he's old? Can I go a second time into my mother's womb and be born a second time? 
Jesus said, truly, truly, I say unto you, except the man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the Amen. kingdom of God. Right. You need to look at how Jesus worded it the first time. He said, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And then the second time he says, except the man be born of water and of the spirit. This is John 3, if you guys don't want to, if you want to know where that's at. John 3, 3 through 18. It's the same chapter we get John 3, 16. Jesus is telling Nicodemus, you must be born again. He said, the second time he says, except you be born of water and of the spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. And then he gets to the most famous part of scripture that we know in the New Testament. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For the Son of God did not come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. And this is the condemnation that has come upon the world, that light has shone into the darkness, and the darkness has not comprehended it. Amen? Amen. Wow. He that believes is what was the same? He that believes is saved, but he that does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Amen? It's very important. Jesus said we must be born again. So there's a difference between just knowing what I believe. There's just knowing, just knowing the things that I should believe. And actually knowing in whom I have believed. Paul, when he said these words, remark, if you remember, he said, I know in whom I have believed. And I am persuaded, what did he say? That neither height, nor depth, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things above, nor things beneath, are able to separate me from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. But notice how he said it. I have no, I know in whom I have believed. He didn't just say I know the things that I'm supposed to believe in. Come on, come on. He said I know in whom I have believed. As a matter of fact, Jesus in John chapter 7 when he's talking about separating the or you know telling false prophets in Matthew chapter 7 where he talked about telling the difference between false prophets in Matthew chapter Seven, and I believe it's verse 11. Let's go over and read it. I don't want to mutilate it like I just did the other verse Paul said. Let's go to Matthew 7. <clears throat> Matthew 7. Beware of false prophets. This is verse 15. Beware of false prophets which do come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do not men gather grapes, or do men gather grapes from thorns or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bear evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruit, you shall know them. And this is the most important part of this whole chapter. The way he ends this right here. He said, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But they that do the will of my Father, which is in heaven. We can go back to John chapter 14. He that loveth me keepeth my commandments. And he that loveth me will I manifest myself unto them. It's not just about knowing Jesus or knowing about Jesus. It's about actually knowing him. There's a whole lot of people that know about Jesus. They've heard the stories. They know what their grandma said. They know what their dad believed. They know what their brother believed. Jesus doesn't ask Peter. Jesus didn't stop about, well, what do, what do some people say that I am? Who, who do some people say that I am? And they asked him the second question, but who do you say I am? It's very important in our personal relationship with Jesus. Not only do we know what to believe, we know in whom 
we have believed. Amen? Amen. This got me thinking about some things in the church, in our church in particular. And I want to just take you through a few things. Here, I'm going to put the microphone up here for a second. I'm going to take you through a few things at Agape Fellowship Church that we believe. Is that all right? Amen. Yeah. Now, I took these documents straight from our Constitution and bylaws, and they're scripture upon scripture upon scripture for everything that we believe. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay? <clears throat> This is the Constitution and Bylaws of this church. And I started with just the first three preferences, just three pages. I don't even know I'm going to get through all three pages. There's a lot of stuff here. We give a summary of what we believe at the very beginning. Agape Fellowship Church, whereas bringing into incorporated this body of people of precious like faith, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ for eternal life, through his death and the power of his resurrection. We believe that the Bible is God's word and the revealed and the revelation of his will to man, accept it as our rule of faith and conduct. We believe Christian fellowship, mutual edification, and evangel evangelical effort in the form of the local church is God's ordained order for his people. We believe each church is to assemble together for worship, fellowship, counsel, instruction in the word and the work of the ministry. We believe the local church is free and autonomous to worship and seek God's will for themselves under the lordship of Jesus Christ and bound by the truth revealed in his word. We believe each church should ex exercise the gifts and offices provided in the New Testament to obtain the Christian goal. Be therefore perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect. Believe, we believe that God has called and anointed to emphasize the fullness of the gospel through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. There, therefore, we have accepted and adopted the following statements of fundamental truths and constitution. We shall seek by the grace of God and govern by the constitution as set forth and the will also uh, to seek, to teach, and to propagate the doctrines contained in the statement of faith of fundamental truth. God. There is only one God. Amen. Scripture. Here, I want to go with this one. Let's go with this one. This is right from our fundamental faith. This is. This is the thing that we all, all the board members signed when we started this church three and a half years ago. Scripture, the Bible is the word, the inspired word of God, a revelation from God to man. The infallible rule of faith and conduct. I'm going to stop right there. There's so many churches that the Bible is not the infallible rule of their conduct. They will do what they want to do and they will follow their own will, their own desires, and their own pleasures. Yeah. And I would lay them right at the Second Timothy chapter 3 and chapter 4 where Paul says men will turn away from the truth and heap to themselves teachers having itching ears that will teach them to follow after their own lusts. The form of they will have a form of godliness. And deny the power of earth. That's chapter 3, verse 5, I believe, okay? Mm -hmm. Now watch this. It's funny that we get so mixed up on that verse right there. There's so many people, when you read that uh, scripture, and I'm going to take, take my Bible out, and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about, okay? <clears throat> we read it. We read it the other day, didn't we, John? Yep. Wasn't it Romans 1 and 8? Yep. Let's read Romans 1 and 8. I want to see... If we're, if we're remembering this right, okay? We talked about it the other day, but I want you guys to get where I'm coming from when I'm talking about the, the letter to Timothy. No, that ain't it. Oh, it's verse 16. Romans 1 and 16. 
For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Now watch this. I need you to underline this in your Bible. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first and then to the Gentile. Okay, you see that? I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. Now, if you want to underline that, go ahead. But we're going to turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3. We'll flip our Bibles over to 2 Timothy chapter 3, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. This know also, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to their parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affections, truth breakers, false accusers, incontent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. Now I will submit this to you right now. Paul in Romans 1 and 16 says that the gospel is the power of God and the salvation. Amen. But we get turned around when we get to Timothy here and we think, well, this is talking about power. Like I'm laying hands on people and they're falling out and people's getting healed or, or, or diseases are getting healed. Blind eyes are being opened, dead being raised. That's not the power it's talking about. This whole chapter from chapter 3 to the end of chapter 4 is talking about the word of God. Do you want me to prove it? Let's go through it. I like doing this because it cements in me the understanding of what this scripture is talking about. It's not just talking about the power of God like we see in the altar. It's talking about the power of God for regeneration, Where for salvation, the born again experience. Amen? Amen. Second Timothy Second chapter Timothy three. three. Second Timothy three. And we're going to start at verse 6. For this sort are like they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sin and lead them away to divide uh, diverse lusts. Ever learning, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Here we are talking about knowledge and learning and not the spiritual gifts. Well, can I back up just a little bit there? You can. It says... Um they are the kind who worm their way into homes and gain control over gullible women. Yeah, we can't be gullible, right? <laughs> I do. Now, as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Notice he didn't say these resist the anointing in the altar. It says these resist the truth. Because this, the warfare that we're not fighting, the warfare we're fighting is not so that we can have some crazy Holy Ghost experience. Now, I love the Holy Ghost, and I love what the Holy Ghost does in my life, amen? amen. But we've also taught some things that the Holy Ghost does that we don't find in Scripture. And then we ignore the things that the Holy Ghost amen. really does, yes. and we don't apply them to our life. Amen. Okay? We need to get back into the Scripture. I'm all for a move of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the teacher. The Holy Spirit is the sealer. The Holy Spirit is the comforter. He speaks the truth. He don't speak his own truth. He speaks what Christ gives him to speak. The Holy Spirit did not come to lift up himself. He came to lift up Christ. Now let's keep reading because I don't want you to fall asleep or lose your way on this, okay? But they shall proceed no further for their folly shall be manifested unto all men as theirs also was. This is verse 9. Now let's get into what Paul's talking about here. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, my manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came on me at Antioch and Iconium and Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, all that are willing uh, will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men, seducers, shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Do you understand that there are a bunch of people out there that are deceiving people? 
and they don't really even know it. Do you know why? Because they, they themselves are deceived. Amen. Yep. He said, deceiving and being deceived. Amen. Yep. Ooh. It's really important. Yep. How do I rightly divide what's the spirit and what's of the flesh? The word of God. Amen. You've got it right in your hand. Most of us have it in our Bibles, on, Bibles on our phone now. You know what I mean? We can look it up any time. You want to know what's spiritual and what's not? Get your Bible open. Now he says this. Watch this. If you don't believe me, let's keep going. He says, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is God given, is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Now if we stop right there. That's proof in itself that what Paul was talking about in Romans 6, 1 and 16 and what he's talking about right here in uh, 2 Timothy chapter, uh, chapter 3, verse uh, 4 or 5, excuse me, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. We're talking about word, doctrine, the things we learn, the things that we can be assured of. And I'd love to stop there, but there's more. We keep reading, and we see that Paul's whole thought process on this subject is the word of God, the gospel of Christ. I charge ye, therefore, chapter 4, verse 1, I charge ye, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. Ooh. I can't preach my opinions. I can't preach my philosophy. I can't preach my pseudo-spiritual, psychological babble stuff from the pulpit. It's got to be the word of God. Amen. Nothing else. There's no other. <laughs> we, had a, we had a discussion. The word of God. The word of God. All scripture is given by God, right? Inspiration of God. We're useful for doctrine, reproof, correcting, and training in righteousness. But the word of God is quick and powerful. Sharper than any double-edged sword. Remember Hebrews chapter 4? says that. It will divide the soul, the spirit, the bone, the marrow, and the thought, and the intent of your heart. The word of God, God's word, is what's going to edify you. Not other people's words. Not other people's opinions. Amen. Not other people's commentaries, okay? I don't, lay, I don't look at the Bible and then go, oh, let me get this commentary. Now, I like commentaries. I like reading commentaries. But they are not the final authority. If what they're saying in their commentary goes directly against what God says in his word, I'm going to throw their commentary away. Amen. Amen. Because God's word is his final authority. Not me. Not mine. Not what I want. Not what I think. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He says, preach the word, verse 2. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust they shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. They shall turn away from turn their ear away from the truth and shall return and be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things. Wow. It's pretty important, ain't it? Do you see, Jesus, when he's coming back, isn't coming back for those who, who have the biggest churches. He's not coming back for those who look sanctified enough. He's coming back for those who, when they were given the gospel truth, they multiplied that. Notice when Jesus gave the talents out to people. Remember that story? He gave out the talents. He gave the one man a talent. He gave this man uh, five talents and this man ten talents. 
And the man who had 10 talents, he went and worked with that 10 talents and got 20 talents. It didn't say he bought land and had land when the Lord land, when the master came back. He said he had 20 talents. He, and the man who had five, he got 10. And the man who had one, hid it away, dug a hole in the ground and put it there because he knew the master of the house was bad and that he, he uh, reaped where he didn't sow and he gathered where he didn't store. Remember all that that he told him? What did God call that man? He said, you wicked servant. Jesus was not going to accept any, anything other than a multiplication of the talents that he gave. The gospel is supposed to multiply out there into the world. But Paul says this, and we read that is the verse we were reading out of Galatians. Remember that? Galatians chapter 1. <clears throat> verse 8. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than the one which thou has been, which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Now, this verse is so serious that in the Greek, that word accursed means bound to hell forever. Okay? Now, I know there's a lot of things being taught out there nowadays. And, oh, you know, God's all right with this sin and that sin and another sin. Guess what? You can't show me in Scripture where God, even in the New Testament, is all right with your sin. He, Jesus went to pay the price for your sin. But that doesn't mean God's okay with your sin, okay? Amen. That doesn't mean God looks at you and goes, hey, Tammy, you're all better now. Now you can go do all the sinning you want to do. Nope, nope. That's not in Scripture. Well, I'm kind of stuck on still back at 2 Timothy 4, verse 5. Uh -huh. But you keep your head in all situations. There you go. Come on. Endure hardship. Come on. Your uh, do the work of an evangelist. Yeah. Discharge all the duties of your ministry. Yeah. Yeah. This wasn't for Paul or Peter or Timothy. It's talking to all of us. Amen. Amen. We it's must every Christian. endure our hardships and rejoice Amen. in Amen. the Lord that He is refining us what to is? what He wants us to be. Well, that's, let's get into some of these doctrines that are preached nowadays, okay? Let's get into some of these doctrines, because if you turn the TV on right now, this is what you'll hear. Well, you know, if you're a butt, butt, born again believer in Jesus Christ, you'll never have a bank account empty, you'll never have your health won't be bad, and you won't go through any bad stuff. Can we not turn that on TV in and find it anywhere we want to? Can we not pull up Facebook and find that kind of preaching? wherever we want to. And then you have to wonder how they get that when Jesus said, in this world, you will have tribulation. In this world, you're going to have to suffer. Matter of fact, he tells us in Matthew and Luke, he says, except you deny yourself, take up your own cross and follow me, you're not even worthy of being my disciples. Amen. Wow. That kind of messes up that whole program, doesn't it? Paul, what did Paul say to Timothy? Let's go back and read that because there was something in there that we always, look, I understand the Bible says that those who walk in the blessing of the Lord are above all and not beneath. They're the head and not the tail. But you've got to understand the person that's telling you this has been running for his life Amen. for 17 years. Amen. I bet he did not feel like he was the head and not the tail, sleeping in a cave, eating little bits of this and little bits of that. I, didn't, I bet he didn't feel like he was above only and not beneath when he was being pursued day and night by an army. Amen. Okay? Which was right outside the cave. Which was right outside the cave. We've got to understand that God did not promise you sunshine and rainbows and fat naked angel babies on the clouds with harps. Michelangelo did that. Come on. A real cherubim would scare every one of us right out of our skin. And he's a ninja turtle. What did he know anyway? Yeah, he's a ninja turtle. Oh my goodness, I've never heard that one. 
Let's go. I don't know where I was going now. <laughs> I think you were going back to 2 Timothy. I'm not sure. Yeah, 2 Timothy. I want to read that one more time, and then we're going to dismiss. I want to clarify what Paul is telling Timothy. Notice that verse 10 in 2 Timothy chapter 3. When he's talking to Timothy, Timothy's the pastor at Ephesus. Paul is the one that uh, was very interested. Uh, Integral in Timothy's ministry. Paul laid hands on Timothy and uh, that Timothy would receive the gift and the calling of God on his life. Remember that? Verse 10, he tells Timothy, But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions. Do you understand that the word persecution is what other people are doing and afflictions are what come on my body? Paul had an infirmity that he dealt with nearly his whole ministry. We don't even know what the infirmity was, but he had it. And most modern faith preachers would start telling him, you just didn't have enough faith, Paul. You just didn't have enough faith for that to go away. And Paul said, I prayed and asked God three times to take it away. And God said, my grace is sufficient. Is sufficient. So what I read from that is Paul, even though he understood the scripture said, who's walking in the blessing of the Lord, we got to understand anybody who's going to live godly in Christ Jesus, what does he say next? Then he said that right in there? Verse 12, yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Amen. That means it's not all going to be nice and fluffy, fat, naked angel babies on the clouds and playing harps and kumbaya by the river. It ain't all going to be like that. I know some women, some ladies in this church that know that fact for real, right? Amen. Amen. A lot of ladies in this church know that. Amen. My wife knows that. Amen. 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 We got to understand, Jesus didn't say, I'm going to move the storm. He said, I'm going to be with you. Amen. What the song we say? He'll be with me in the fire. He didn't keep Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego from going in there. He just went in there with him. He didn't keep Daniel from going to the lions. Don't forget Daniel and them lions. He just went in there with him. Amen. God may not take you out of the problem that you're facing, but he's going to go through it with you. Amen. 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 You know, I figured out lately, you might be facing or even friends with or whatever, a person who is a lion. Mm -hmm. Their personality comes out like a lion. You keep praying. Amen. You will walk through it. Well, God will fix every circumstance, but we got to hold on to the understanding that. Number one, here's what I want all of you to know while I close. This is the last close I'm going to do too. Okay? <laughs> Everybody hold your hand up. You ain't in charge. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I know we don't like that. I know we don't like that. We don't like that stuff. We want to be in control. We okay? have right, the illusion of being in control. Yeah, well, I know I have a God is on the way. I am the number. Heads up with wall. Uh, yeah, it's funny how the creator doesn't have to ask the creation what he wants to do with Thank them. Thank you. Yes. You know, it's funny. Now, I know Annalie would be like, look, I just want a little heads up. Yeah. You don't want that. But, that don't but mean that's not it. faith. Amen. Amen. If God gave us the heads up, it wouldn't be faith then. Amen. Amen. That's why God just told Abraham, hey, Abraham, I need you to leave the earth of Chaldeans and I'm going to go. You're going to go to a place that I'll show you. He didn't say, I'm showing you. He said, I'll show you. When you get there. If he'd have told Abraham, look, in this land in Canaan, you can go right here. All the lessons that Abraham would have had to learn before he got there, he would have bypassed. Come on, that's right. And Abraham wouldn't have been ready for the land of Canaan when he got there. That's right. Just like you, there's a destiny or destination God has for you. But if God gave you a heads up before you got there, you'd bypass all the lessons you'd have to learn to get there. Amen. And when you get there, you wouldn't be ready. That's right. Amen. Amen. And you know, there's some things that God don't give you that you want. You know you don't need. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, man, I like that one. She yeah. said there's some things that God don't give you that you want, but God knows you don't need them. Amen. Yeah, <laughs> or what? Anything. Take your pick. Well, God. with a room full of women, let me throw this out here. Uh-oh. A particular man. Oh, come on. <laughs> we women go, oh, I want that. And God said, uh-uh. You don't That's not that. good for you. Well, you know, it's important to realize in in uh, Genesis that neither Adam nor Eve had a choice yeah. in their union. Amen. Okay? <laughs> they didn't get to pick. They were given. Okay? Amen. And God, I was not looking for a wife when Carmen found me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I wasn't looking. Mm -hmm. Carmen might have been, but I wasn't looking. Okay? Yeah. I was not looking. But it found me anyway. Amen. 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 Jesus. And now I'm blessing God every day that I have him. Go ahead and stand up. I didn't even get into the main portion of all of this. <laughs> but we're going to get to it next week, okay? Well, God Wednesday. Will Wednesday, we'll get to it. The first one we're going to talk about is Scripture. And I only read like two lines into it, okay? But we need to believe Scripture. It needs to be the rule of faith in our life. It's got to be. It can't be so-and-so's opinion. It can't be even pastor's opinion. It's the word of God stands alone. It's the final authority for Christian life and the Christian rule of life. Amen. And I believe we give it more power when it comes out of our mouth. Come on. Come on. There's power in the spoken word. Amen. Amen. Let's go ahead and pray. I want to pray and dismiss. Mike, I told you I wouldn't wait till 1230. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for all those that came out, God. Lord, I pray that you would help us, God. Lord, I pray that you would help us as we uh, live our life for you, God. Let us focus our life and our heart on the word of God, the gospel of Christ. And let us not move from one side to the other, God, but let us hold fast to that which is true. Lord, we, we ask for your help, your grace, and your mercy in our life. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I know I messed up last week, so I'm not going to mess up this week.